Hi, this is Bartosz Miluski with the sixth installment of the C11 concurrency series. Last week I showed you a program that did a massively parallel directory listing. This time I want to show you this program in a diagram form, just to recap how it worked. So the program starts by creating a task whose goal is to list a particular tree. So in this case it lists uh, C colon backslash. Now the result of the listing is files and subdirectories. Now for each subdirectory a new task is created. It's an identical task except that it's supposed to list this particular subtree starting with a particular subdirectory. So for instance the subdirectory B has a corresponding task that's listing B. And again, listing of B produces a list of files and a list of subdirectories. In this case, it's E, F, and G. Now, once the tasks are created, they don't immediately return the result. They just return a future. So we have to put a barrier there to wait for all these futures to become ready. Once a future is ready, it produces a list of files from all its subtasks. All these lists from, from the subdirectories are then merged with the files from the current directory and they are passed back to the parent task. At this moment in the parent task this particular future becomes active and crosses the barrier and uh, returns the listing. Now this listing is then again merged with all the other listings and the files in the current directory and so on until we reach the top task which merges all its files and returns a complete list of files. So as you can see this program uh, executes in waves. The first wave is listing of the directories at the top putting a barrier on them, then more tasks are created for, this, for each subdirectory of the given subdirectory, and so on. And this wave grows and grows, producing more and more tasks, until eventually it reaches the leaves of the directory tree, at which point the wave turns back and the subtasks start returning file lists. And once they return the file list, the future becomes ready at the parent, and the parent again collects all the results and sends them back to the parent task, and so on, until the whole accumulated list of all files in this tree goes back to the root task and is returned to the caller. The problem with this uh, arrangement is that it produces a huge number of tasks. Possibly the number of tasks is uh, equal to the number of subdirectories in a given tree. And when I ran this program with launch policy async so that every task was associated with a thread, my system ran out of threads. So this, this kind of algorithm is not very well suited for C11 tasks. In a full-blown task-based uh, system, this would work better because the tasks that are blocked on the barrier, they wouldn't be occupying threads. They would be taken off their threads and other tasks would have an opportunity to use these threads. So this way, the number of threads would be bounded. So this is what I would like to do. I would like to rewrite this program, probably rewrite it from scratch, to use this kind of arrangement where the number of threads is bounded. Here's the idea for the new implementation. I will still create a separate task for each directory. But this time this task will not keep generating new tasks to list its subdirectories, which will in turn create subtasks to list their subdirectories and so on. This leads to a proliferation of tasks 
and also to proliferation of threads. So instead, I will list the directory and store the files in one list and directories in another list. And I will return these two lists. So here's the structure result that combines these two lists. There's a files vector and there's a dirs vector. So now my task is very simple, the task function. I'm listing a directory. Here's my directory iterator. And for each element, I will ask the question, iterator, please tell me, are you a directory? If you are a directory, then I will put you in one list. Result dot dears dot pushback and I will require a full path. So it path. Else it's a file. So I will push you on a different list. Result files push back. And this time I need a path too, but from this path I would like to extract leaf. Leaf is just the name of the file. Okay. And then I re return the result. So this is my task function. Now let's go to main. I will start listing at some root directory. Here this is not a big directory, but I will just to just demonstrate how it works. So I will have a list of directories to do. This will be my running list of directories that I will still have to list. And I'll start with just one directory in it, the root. But I'll keep adding to it. Now this is the list of files, that's my result. This is the accumulator that accumulates the list of files. And the whole algorithm will go in a loop. At every iteration of the loop, it will create a bounded number of tasks. And this is the main idea of this implementation. We don't want to create an unbounded number of tasks. We want to create a bounded number of tasks so we can only uh, use a finite bounded number of threads. Okay? So since I will be creating tasks, I need a vector of futures to put these tasks in, the, in this list. So let me write a loop that takes directories from my to-do list and starts async tasks for each of these directories. However, I want to count how many I take. I don't want to take more than a certain number. This is my upper bound of, on the number of tasks that will be running in parallel. So I'll, st I'll have some counter, int i equals 0, and I will stop at i equal, let's say, 16. I don't want to have more than 16 tasks. Now I have to check if there are actually tasks to do, so I'll look at my to-do list. There's to-do, and ask it, are you empty? And actually not empty. So as long as it's not empty, I want to create tasks. Okay, and here I want to increment plus plus i. Okay, so here I'm creating an async task. I need a future that will be returned by this task std async and 
I want to list. Okay, so it's uh, address of list there. And I want to pass it the argument which is taken from the top of my to do list. There's to do top. Uh, I mean back. And of course, I want to pop this directory. There's to do pop back. So I keep popping these directory. Uh, now, if you remember, list dir actually takes an R value reference to avoid too much copying. So when I'm sending this directory, this path here, I want to actually move it. STD move. Now this is an interesting situation. The directory will be moved from the top of the stack. So for a moment, top of the stack will be empty. It will be an empty string. Um, but then I immediately pop it back. Okay, so I have these futures. I have to push this future back on my futures vector futures dot push back and again futures are not copyable so I have to move it std move and it's okay to move it because I'm not going to use it anymore okay I call it FUT. Fine. Okay, and that's it. So I have created this up to 16 tasks. I have futures for them. And now I have to force these tasks. I have to create a barrier. So I'm going to just keep popping uh, futures from this um, vector of futures and wait for them. Okay, so while there is something on the futures vector, or in other words, not futures empty, while there are more futures, I will get them. So this is my future from the futures list, futures, and what do I do? Back, right? But again, this will not work really because futures cannot be copied, so I have to move it. STD move. Okay, so again, I removed a future from the top of the stack, now I have to pop it futures pop back okay now that I'm done with it I'm gonna get the result from the future I'm gonna f I'm gonna force the future to get my result equals FTR get getting my result and actually I know what the type of the result is and it's not a lot of typing so I'm just gonna write it result result future get okay and at this point I'm thinking I was worried so much about copying but here now I'm copying the whole result returned by the future and these are two lists to be copied that's not good. We shouldn't be doing things like these. And the reason is that my result, my structure result, is not movable. It doesn't have move semantics. So I'll show you how to make it movable, how to introduce move semantics. And I'll do this by creating a move constructor. A move constructor takes a source by R value reference. OK, 
Okay. So that's one thing. The other thing is that it will, instead of copying the contents of the source, it will move it. So dears, actually no underscore dears, will be moved, std move from the source r dot dears and files will be moved from the source r files mm -hmm. and that's it now of course what happens now that I have this move constructor uh, suddenly this doesn't work, the default constructor doesn't work. Okay, I have to explicitly now say that there is a default constructor. And of course it doesn't do anything, because there's nothing to do. The two lists will be initialized to empty lists anyway. All right. So back to main. Now we have the move constructor, so this is actually a cheap operation. And once I have forced the future, I get my results, the two lists, and I want to copy these results. So the list of files, I know what to do with the list of files. I have to copy them on the, my cumulative list of files. So std copy. Okay. And source is result dot files dot begin. And this is a little bit of typing here. Unfortunately, there is no simpler way of doing it yet. And, and, okay. And the destination is my files vector. Uh, however, I want to do a pushback, so I need a back inserter, back inserter for the list of files. So back inserter creates an iterator which actually points to the top of a vector and it just inserts at the top. Okay, now I have to copy the directories onto my to-do list. So, in order not to have to type too much, I'm just copying it and hopefully not making many mistakes. And these are tears to do. Here we go. And that's it. Now, as you see, I have this try-catch block around it because directory listing might throw exceptions. So it's, it's good to catch them all. So after many iterations, eventually the to-do list will get empty. I mean, we keep adding to it, but eventually we reach the leaves and we stop adding and then we just keep removing files directories from the list and eventually the, the whole process terminates. So here's the for each that prints all these files at the end and that's it. So let's compile this program and run it. It won't run for a very long time. That's it. Now of course this is fast because it's a small directory. I did the same experiment by listing my whole disk, which contains lots and lots of subdirectories, and actually the result was not so bad. Well, the first time you run it, there's actually a lot of disk access, so it takes a long time. But the second time you run it, the directory structure is already cached in memory. And in that case, it actually took me only seven seconds to list my whole drive. I'm, I'm not counting the time when the file names were printed, obviously. 
this last program was an example of a more general family of algorithms called MapReduce. MapReduce is used to process large amounts of data in parallel. It's usually used in distributed systems where your units of parallelism are machines. You start with an input list, which is your data divided into key value pairs. The reason you want to have keys with your values is that keys serve the purpose of distributing data to various tasks. All data that has the same key goes to the same task. So keys are sort of like tickets that direct the traffic. And now when they are distributed, then for each element you perform a certain action called map. And the important thing is that map is really independent of all the other data. It just works on this element of your data set that was sent to it. And it performs some kind of transformation or calculation. And while doing this, it emits results. And these results, in general, again, are key-value pairs. And this time the key could be of a completely different type than the original key that was used in the first step. Then there is a barrier. There's usually one computer or one task that is waiting for all the others to finish. And once they are all finished, the results are gathered together and they are sorted by the key. And the result is a, is a list of pairs. Each pair contains the key and a list of values, all the values that corresponded to the same key. These values could have come from different tasks, but they were emitted with the same key. And then again, the keys are used for distribution New tasks are started and they do the second part of the algorithm called reduce. And again, reduce is a function that operates only on a particular element. It's independent of the rest of the data set. So it operates on a key and the list of values corresponding to this key. And it performs some transformation or some calculation. If reduce returns results, then they are usually finally merged on one machine. There is one very important aspect of all these programs that I've been showing you so far. That we don't use data sharing and we don't have to use any synchronization like mutexes or logs or events because we are not sharing data. What happens is that we are moving data between threads. And that's very much different from sharing because moving does not require any additional synchronization. And on top of this, moving can be made very efficient when you start using move semantics. So in all these algorithms we were trying not to copy any data, we were always trying to move data. And I think these algorithms are the future of concurrent programming. They are easy to use, they are less bug-prone, and they are efficient.